fraud and rigged elections goes back to when I was three years old, actually. Um, I can remember my mother telling me that Mr. Nixon lost the election because dead people voted in Chicago. Um, I didn't know what it meant, of course, but eventually I did. And then you do tend to associate Chicago uh, with that sort of thing. Uh, so, so that's just an aside. Um, but looking at the, the idea of elections, um, these are just absolutely they're the key to consensual government, uh, to a decently run society. Uh, it, it allows for the transfer of power between one group and another, and it represents, it gives the average citizen some idea that his, his interests are represented, represented and that he has some say in how uh, his country is run. Uh, you do, of course, need uh, other things. You need to have a sort of a decent society. You need an honest judiciary. Uh, you need a free, uh, aggressive press. You need uh, intelligence services and the military that are apolitical. You need a, a clean bureaucracy, and you need honest, uh, diligent legislators. Um, but looking at elections, and that's what I'm here for, is the elections are incredibly fragile. Now, they sound simple, and they kind of are, but they're very hard to, to keep alive, to keep them honest. And because there's always a certain type of person, a certain type of politician, uh, who doesn't want that, who wants to subvert the election, uh, really so that it's all about power, and also to, and want, and to avoid accountability uh, for wrongdoing. Right? And there's no shortage of examples. Uh, today in Belarus, in white Russia, you have just a completely rigged election, and just go down the list, and there's no shortage of examples. Um, and, but you have this problem, of course, and everyone can understand this, that one party rule, uh, where one, one party, uh, one group has permanent power, it, it invariably leads to the same problems. Uh, society, government becomes corrupt, the opposition is weakened, it effectively neutered, it has no loses any sort of a power. Uh, the press is no longer a free press. Uh, you have the judiciary inevitably becomes corrupt and does the, the ruling group's bidding. The economy, it ruins the economy eventually, but it, it certainly will. Um, and then you find that these kind of regimes that only that they, they will not give up power, they tend to only associate with similar regimes. So you have, they, you have the, the North Koreas, the Irans, uh, the Russias, the Chinas of the world. They all like each other, but the, the free civilized countries, they don't have anything to do with them or with each other. But I'm going to focus on one thing about elections that, that I think are particularly important. Uh, and that is that you can't, because one thing is election rigging or uh, fake an election that can often be hard to detect because you're trying, you know, most governments try to keep it uh, secret. Some don't even bother. Once again, Venezuela, uh, Belarus, they don't care. But usually, particularly in a, see, a civilized country that you're, that you're trying to subvert, it's hard to actually find the, the smoking gun, to find the direct evidence. But there is one way that you can draw some reasonable inferences, and that is how a government responds to claims of election rigging, a fraudulent election, that actually shows, tells you a lot. Um, and it tells you two main things. It gives you some idea about the nature of the administration, about the nature of the government. And also it tells you something about the likelihood uh, that there actually was fraud as alleged. Um, if you, and so what's the response? What are the, the telltale signs? If the administration or the regime, uh, if they just dismiss the claims, they say it didn't happen, or they uh, ignore the, 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 the allegations, or if they just make the most cursory, superficial response to it that nobody could possibly believe, well, that tells you something. And if they intimidate people who raise these charges, particularly using the so-called legal process, to silence the critics, or to silence the people who've accused them of wrongdoing. Um, that tells you everything. Uh, and that is, so, in what, so what do you have? If a, if a regime does this, you know that what they want is one party rule. 
Sometimes it's obvious, but in order to subvert a country, it usually takes time. Venezuela is an excellent example of that, because that took a little while for the, the bad guys to get their, their hands around the throat of the, of the Venezuelan society. It took some time, but that's it, it tells you what the regime wants, and the, the objective is one-party dictatorship. Uh, but the second point is that it, it also tells you that, yeah, the election probably was rigged. Uh, and human, just what we know of human nature tells us this. If that's the response to serious allegations, uh, credible allegations against the most important part of a consensual democracy, and somebody doesn't want to deal with it, wants to talk about it, but just dismisses it, or tries to suppress the people who bring that, well, you can, the, the common sense tells us what exactly did happen, and probably uh, that the charges are true. Now, I would just want to talk about the, the Korean election in, back in April, because uh, I follow, I had followed the election in Korea, and I remember when it when the results came out, I remember thinking, "Wow, that was that was unusual," and I didn't really pay much attention to what had happened because one, just I don't generally think in a country like this that you're going to have bid rig, uh, election rigging. But the more I looked into it, and the more I've learned, and since I've been able to come here and talk to people, uh, the more interesting it gets, uh, and the you have. Just you go down the list of, of evidence uh, information, and you've got 25 candidates who filed suit. You've got upwards of maybe a total of 140 ish of serious charges and, uh, brought against uh, of wrongdoing. This ranges from electronic manipulation, uh, ballot counting machines, uh, uh, servers, uh, use of QR codes. Uh, then there's the statistical oddities of the, the voting patterns, uh, particularly where it's early voting versus election day voting. Um, in fact, one, and, and the use and the, the extent to which uh, early day, early votes just trickled in or came in just enough to tip the scales for, in, for Democratic Party candidates in an incredible number of closely contested cases, almost uh, 100%. And one, uh, very credible uh, observer actually compared compared some of the statistical improbabilities in the election results as flipping a coin a thousand times and having it come up heads uh, every time. Well, I would like to go to Las Vegas with whoever could pull that off. Uh, so then you have evidence of the actual physical, the paper ballots uh, being mishandled, uh, fraud involved there, the so-called chain of custody uh, for the, the physical ballots is so much anecdotal evidence that the chain of custody is uh, terrible. Uh, you have things like surveillance cameras shut off in polling booths, uh, polling stations, only for the early voting uh, period. Um, you have uh, places where there's more votes than there are voters. Uh, and then you have some very serious misuse of personal protection, of personal information uh, protection laws. And that on its own right uh, should be have alarms going off and it's extremely serious. Um, but also look at the, consider the context in which the election took place. Uh, that is important. And you have a, an administration which by any measure, and this was even, uh, I could see it even long before uh, the election, that was apparently intent on uh, weakening or even ending the uh, Republic of Korea U.S. Uh, relationship uh, with a preference for, apparently even a preference over, so that relationship, a preference for North Korea, a preference for China even. Um, now the Chinese would agree with the idea of weakening the relationship, getting the Americans off the Korean Peninsula. And then you have these certainly curious uh, events like very senior uh, ruling party officials and advisors who go to China and sign policy coordination agreements with Chinese entities. Uh, once again, that is the context in which this takes place, and it goes to questions of uh, certainly motivation. Um, but, he, but here's what the thing. When I, and I would say I'm just fairly new in looking into this, but when you consider the response of the, the administration and the, the relevant governmental entities in Korea, the response to these allegations, uh, now, with the administration, of course, they, 
administrations never uh, take these, ser these claims seriously and they will just ignore it. So that's almost predictable. But you look at the, the NEC, the National Election Commission, their response has not been diligent. Uh, there's doubts about how they have handled, uh, how well they're safely, securely, they've handled equipment, ballots, and records to preserve it for future, uh, future study. And in terms of releasing information, they don't seem to have been very good. Um, uh, having forensic examinations of the ballot counting machines, once again, uh, there's not a there's no proactive aggressive way to disprove for them to go out and say look we hear these charges but, but here's why they're not true they're just not doing that and that is suspicious the courts once again they do not seem to be uh, all that interested in finding out what happened uh, that too is very suspicious behavior uh, unfortunately the, the media the mass media here does not seem to take much interest in this uh, and also, the, the apparently, the opposition party doesn't uh, uh, seem as uh, incensed or interested in as one might be. So what are the inferences here? If you were to ask sort of any normal person on the street, you know, if you described all of this, say say it happened in, Amer in America, in an American city, if you asked a taxi driver or anybody, 100% of them would say, well, yeah, they're hiding something. You know, what's, what's so hard to figure out about that? Um, and that is, so that is, well, it, that is, to me, that is a, a plausible, logical conclusion. And, and so what I would note is that what this group and people in up here are doing is so important because nobody else seems to be digging into this uh, with the enthusiasm that they, that they should. Um, and that, that's important. And I would also note that this is not just a South Korean issue. This is something that absolutely applies. It is important for America, for democracies in, in Asia and around the world. Uh, the, just from an American perspective, what happens on this peninsula? It has a ripple effect uh, for the security situation, the political situation uh, in the region and beyond that we are, have relied on for, for decades now. Uh, additionally, just the and there's not enough democratic consensual governments around the world, and there, many of them are under siege, and you can't afford to, to lose one more. Um, and America has its own election coming up, and there's, we should certainly pay attention to what has happened uh, here in, in, South, in South Korea. So it is important to figure out what happened or, or what didn't happen. And, and as I noted, the, the response of the incumbent administration in Korea and the relevant government entities, their response is going to tell you so much about what did or didn't happen here. Uh, so that is important. But once again, I appreciate the opportunity to actually come to come here and learn something about it because it, it is so, so important uh, to, to get this resolved and to really protect democracy, protect consensual government and uh, protect free people. So thank you very much.